I want to welcome everybody to the broadcast today and want to just tell you we appreciate you listening and uh, y'all uh, uh, let your friends know and stuff like that that we come on. If you're watching by internet, why, uh, you know, email people that you know and they'll listen. Uh, we just come to obey the Lord and to tell people about Jesus and if they lost, let, encourage them that they need to get saved and uh, encouraging people to hold on and, and we just uh, ask you to pray for us and uh my wife's going to sing a song here, and when she gets done with this song, well, I'll be back in just a minute with a message. Living in a cold, dark world Where evolution's taught by man Praise the Lord. That's right. Uh, that's what uh, John 14, 6 says. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father but by me. You know, and, and the Spirit of the Lord has been dealing with your heart, and you've been hearing the Word of God being preached, and the Lord been dealing with your heart. He'll draw you, and He'll draw you. And it, listen, when He starts drawing you, and you feel that uh, drawing Spirit drawing you like that, that's the Holy Ghost convicting your heart. Uh, if you'll heed to that and ask Jesus to come into your life, he'll save you. And then when you get saved, you ever ask Jesus to save you? I've heard people say, man, I tried to hold that in, and I was about to blow up. I couldn't hold it in. I had to go tell somebody. You won't be able to hold it in if you get saved, I can assure you. I, I didn't when I got saved. I told everybody. Some people said, man, I'm glad to hear it, and some people didn't want to hear it. But uh, 
John 12, 32, Jesus said, And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. You know what? He was lifted up on that cross over 2,000 years ago. He gave his life at Calvary that I could be saved. I was sitting at church this morning at a place, and I was sitting there, and people are saying, I'd like to see something that would show me that God is real. Show me He is real. Well, if you're sitting at home uh, watching today, and you're saying, I'd like for you to show me something that would let me see that the Lord is real. Well, let me say it like this right here. I can show you His mercy and His grace. And you say, how can you do that? Well, death came my way one time, and it, but it didn't happen. It should have had. I just talked to a man just uh, about, uh, oh, about six day, five or six days ago that told me he saw me in that accident that I was in. He said, people said, he ain't going to never make it. Some of them ain't thought I was dead laying, laying there. But you see, I didn't die. And the, you don't want me to show you what his mercy and grace is? Here I am standing here today, 30-something years later, when death came my way, but God wouldn't allow it to happen. And I'm saved, living for Jesus Christ. That is, is his mercy and grace that I didn't die back in and open my eyes up in hell. You're looking at mercy and God's mercy and grace that He put a stowed upon me to allow me not to leave this walks of life undone without Him. That's God's mercy and grace. I was at a place one time and the Lord showed me faith. I saw it with my own eyes. I seen faith. You say, I don't know if you can, if you can see that or not. Yeah, you can see it. The Lord showed it to me. I'm going to tell you something. God is real. Jesus Christ, His Son, is real. I don't care what, what religion you're of, what country you're from, what color you are, what nationality. It don't make no difference. Jesus died on that cross for every one of us. And we need to know that he's real and that he loves you and that he wants you to be saved. He said he come to seek and to save that which was lost. And if you're out there and you're lost and undone without Jesus Christ, Listen, Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. His love for, the, for you has not changed, not one bit. It don't make no difference that it has been 2,000 years since he died on that cross or a little over. Listen, it don't make no difference. His love and his blood is still just as precious today as it was the day that it dripped off of that cross. It's still just as precious today. That, there's nothing that can make me whole and wash away my sins but the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ alone and no other name. Give them under heaven, the Bible says, whereby a man can be saved except the precious name of Jesus. Now, I want to talk to you about something. There's a lot of people that are starting to get their mind off of the Lord about, you know, I've heard it for all of my life about Jesus coming back. You know, and here I am 50 years old and I've heard it all my life, Jesus coming back. Listen, he's not slack concerning his promises. He is coming back. Amen. He is going to come. He will come just like he says. You say, well now, why does preacher say that so much that we need to be watching and stuff and be looking for Jesus? He told the disciples when Jesus did before he left, he said, watch and pray for you know not the hour when I'll come back. He told them to watch. You know something that will help you to live closer to the Lord and help you to uh, walk upright with the Lord more is if you look at looking for Him on a daily basis. In other words, don't just sit down and wait looking for Him. Be about your business. Go on and tarry. The Bible says tarry till He comes. Go on and do your daily job. Go out and do whatever you got to do, whatever kind of job you got. Go out and do your work. If you stay at home and you're at home and uh, you don't work and you're at home, pray and meditate on the Lord. Look for the Lord. Keep your mind upon the Lord. The Bible says pray without ceasing. It will help you to keep your mind focused upon the Lord and it won't have so much room for the enemy to throw them thoughts in there. Now, I heard something uh, last night that really did click. I've been praying about some stuff and uh, about some messages that the Lord has showed me. And we're going to touch on just a little bit of it right here, here in just a few minutes. But I want you to look at something. Let me go over here. I want to read you a scripture. 
I like it when the Lord just starts giving scriptures out. And when he does that, I like to go to them and read them and, and do what the Lord's told me to do. Now, I want you to read. I want you to, if you got your Bible, I want you to open up to Luke chapter 10. Now, I want to read you a scripture right here that the Lord uh, wants me to read. Well, I read, listen, I may read scriptures over here on a regular basis. But I, I, don't, I don't know who's listening. But the Lord knows. And the Lord knows who needs to hear what. If we have a new listener tuning in and ain't listening, he may, they may need to hear this scripture. That may be, that's just why, that God don't do nothing that's out of order. That's why that I'm, uh, I obey the Lord. Now listen, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and, on, and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now I want to say something right here. I want you to listen to me. When Jesus died on the cross, he went down into hell and he stripped Satan of death, hell, and the grave and stripped him of his authority over him and over us. We have the authority over, over the enemy. Now let me say it like this. I'll explain it to you. It's similar to what I heard this man say it, and it's one of the best illustrations, a way that you can understand it. I understand it and give you, show you what I'm talking about here. There's a man, there's five people jumped on him. By the strength that he had and his power that he had, you know, a uh, big guy, he beat them guys up. He beat them up. Now, did he do that with, a, uh, with authority or did he do it with the power that he had in his body to do it? He did it with the power that he had in his body to overcome them five people. That same guy gets in his car and leaves going down the road and he gets down the road and there's a police standing out in the middle of the road and he stops. He pulls up there and that police officer said, Sir, the road is closed down the road. You need to go left here and go around it. Now that guy didn't get out of the car and beat him up or the deputy didn't beat him up. What happened? That man pulled up there. That just got through beating them guys up. It jumped on him for no reason. He got down there and he saw that man with that badge on. And that man with that badge on had authority, see. So the deputy told him, he said, just take and go around the detour and come back out on down the road down there where the road's closed and you can go on. Listen to me. The enemy is presenting things with us. He has the power to tempt us and to present things to us, put thoughts in our minds that's not of God, but he does not have the authority to make us act Amen. on that uh, thoughts and to that sin that is presented in front of us. Wow. Think about that now. The Lord give us the power and authority over the enemy. You see, man might bring a, could bring a, a bottle of drugs and set them down right here the enemy could tempt him to bring them in here and set them down right here in front of me but that man that brought them in here don't have the authority over me to make me take them things i have the the authority over what i do through the power of the holy ghost and the glory of god to resist that and not do that thing do you see and understand the enemy's going to tempt us in our mind he's going to put thoughts in our mind He's going to tempt us with things of this world. He's going to tempt you with sin. He's going to try to do everything that he can to distract you. He'll use people to do that. See, somebody, a person can tempt me with something. They don't have the authority to make me react to that. Get hold of that. Get hold of that. It'll help you. See, the enemy has the power to tempt us, but he does not have the authority to make us do that. Jesus gave us the authority over that, over the thoughts of our mind, and not to do those things. But we need to uh, get that down in our spirit. We need to read the Word of God and get a hold of what the Word of God says. The Lord is trying to help us, to show us, and to guide us in the spirit of truth that we'll know what's right and what's wrong. He loves you out there today, the Lord does. It's not His will, the Bible says, that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. Jesus loves you. He gave his life at Calvary for you. Listen, it's not his will that you perish. And I say this a lot, and I'm going to say it again. There's nowhere in this Bible right here where it's scriptural that the enemy can overcome you if you're saved. He does not have the authority to do it. He can't. He can attempt you. He can, he can do all kinds of things and do it, but he cannot. It's not scriptural for you to be overcome by sin or by anything of this world. God made a way that we could, could escape those things. 
Now, I want to read you a scripture right here. The Lord's led me over here, and I'm going to read this right here. I got some scriptures wrote down here. We, if the Lord allows, we'll get to them right here on this paper that I got wrote down. But if not, I want to obey the Lord. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, I, I want to leave here this evening. When I leave here, I want the Lord to be pleased with how everything went. My concern and my heart's desire is if people that's listening, that you can learn something. If you're out there and you're lost and done without Jesus Christ, that you'll come to accept the Lord as your Savior. If you're out there and you backed up on the Lord and, and you went back off out there bedabbling in sin, we can say something to you to let you see that you need Jesus in your life more than you need anything in this world in your life. You see, I, I need Jesus. I've got to have him in my life. I've got to have my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in my life. I know where Jesus is. He's sitting on the right hand of the Heavenly Father making intercession for you and I. He sent the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, dwells within me, it lead God and directs me in spirit and in truth. He is real. And He wants to let you, He wants to show you how real He is. The only way that you're really going to fully know is that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Listen right here what Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now listen to this next scripture. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. See, the enemy is going to mess with you in your mind. That's where the playground's at. That's why the Bible talks about pray, praying without ceasing. Keeping your mind upon the Lord. The Bible says them to keep their mind upon the Lord will he keep them in perfect peace. Because when you got your mind upon the Lord, see, just like my wife sung that song right there, of what's wrong with living right. See, you take prayer out and, and God out of everything, what do you think is going to fill that void? The enemy is going to move into them positions and places, into uh, schools, and then uh, violence is going to come in. You look at what's going to turn your TV on and watch and see what's going on. Now, I'm not going to call the uh, channels on the, on the main news, big media, that you can turn it on. And if you'll turn it on the right one, you'll see, but you still ain't going to see it all on there like what you'll see if you'll get on the Internet and punch up in there and look at what's going on in the world. There's things going on all over this world. And here in America, the more that we, it, 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 people wants to push God out of everything, the more his hand's being lifted up off of it. But you know what? He's not lifting his hand up off of his people. He's right here with us. He, he's with me. I know he is. He's with you if you're saved out there. And don't be, don't be so frightened about what you see going on all over the world. Just trust the Lord and know that he's with us and he's going to be with us. And the Bible says not to think it's strange when you see the enemy falling down around you. When you see things going on all over the world, just trust the Lord. That's why we need to get in the Word and read the Word of God. I can read this word right here and turn the TV on and I can see this word actually being played out before my very eyes. It's happening. It's not coming down the road, these things that the Bible talks about. They're already here. You, I don't know if y'all have noticed it or not what's going on over in these other countries where they're killing people and beheading them. The Bible says they'll kill you thinking they're doing God a service. You see, their God and my God are not the same. Their Jesus and my Jesus is not the same. My Jesus, praise God, is real. He is, he is not uh, converted over to any other religion. He is Jesus Christ, the Son of the God. He is the Son of the living God. He's real. Listen, he's, he's changing people's minds that have been in other religions and different religions for years and years. They're starting to come around and see the truth, and the truth is in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Now, he loves you out there. I want to read you another scripture. It's in uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Listen right here to what Jesus said. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. We need to pray always that we be found worthy to stand before the Son of Man. These things are going to come, listen. I've heard people say, boy, it's going, to be, it's going to be something else to be here during the tribulation. Listen, you don't have a clue. You need, to get, you need to read the Word and see what it says about the tribulation. It's not going to be what you think it is. Right now, salvation is free. It's been paid for. During tribulation, it's going to cost you your life. If you, I, 
I've, I have, Lord, I've been around in the Holy Ghost to speak and let people know, don't take a mark if you get left behind. Because these people, it's not, they don't want to believe it, but when the church is took out of, out of here, and I, I listen, I'm not one that's going to predict that he's coming next week at 2 o'clock because that would be a lie, because I don't know. The Bible says that nobody knows, say, when he's going to come back. But well, there's going to come a time that, that the Father's going to say, Jesus, go get my children. This thing is settled up and it's done. But you know what concerns me so much that people are not looking at is if what if you leave here tonight before the sun comes up in the morning? Right. See, my mom and dad's done gone on to be with the Lord. When Jesus comes back, don't, it's not going to make them one bit of difference because why? They're already there. But you see, I ain't made it there yet. So therefore, I'm like old Paul. I got to keep fighting the good fight of faith. I got to hold on. I got to endure. I got to run the race and keep the faith. You see, we're going to have to hold on and keep trusting the Lord and going on. Because the Bible says, them that endure in the end, the same shall be saved. There's going to be some endurance we're going to have to do. I tell you, it saddens my heart. It, it really does sad my heart. People, need to read, you need to read the Word of God and get a hold of it for yourself. Don't trust me. You look at the Word and see what it says. Get your Bible out and read uh, what I'm uh, T telling you when I read the scripture, open your Bible up and read it with me. I want you to open your Bible if you got it to Romans chapter 13. I'm going to read you verse 11 through 14. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of a sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in riding, and in drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You know, I've never seen such much temptation as there is in the world today. The, the young kids and stuff like that, there's just so much stuff out there. It's out there to tempt them. And things going on and people presenting stuff to them. Listen, we need to pray for our young uh, folks. We need to pray for our teenagers. They have so much stress on them. So much stress on them. We need to pray for our youth. We need to pray for our soldiers. We need to pray for Israel. The Bible says he had blessed them that blessed Israel and he would cursed them that cursed them. We need to pray for Israel. This, this nation right here is it's, it's going in the wrong direction. And listen... It, I, we need God in our lives. We're going to have to have the Lord in our life. Listen, if you don't have, we need to get a hold of the Lord. We need to be like that tree planted by the water that can't be moved. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's coming a the times in this uh, country right here that you don't know what you may face. And you're going to need Jesus Christ in your life in order to be able to stand. Listen right here. I want to read you something else. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm going to read 1 through 11. But other times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as the thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman and with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Let me stop right there. I don't know the day or the hour when Jesus is coming, but I know what the Word of God says to first to look for. And if we're seeing those things. He said, when you see the, uh, Israel encamped about by their enemies, know that that day is drawn now. They're right now over there encamped about them. And as this going on right now, there's things going on behind the scenes. You'll never see it on TV. They're over there right now trying to push Israel and really wanting them to go back to the 1967 borders, the way they was before then. But I'm going to tell you something. They can do what they want to over there. They're they going to come again, Israel. It's scriptural that they're going to come again, Israel. But i got news for them. They, they're not going to win. The Bible says that they won't. They will not. And you know something? Israel knows the Old Testament. And they've read it and they know what it says. Now listen right here. You are the children of light and the children of the, uh, and the, children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, and let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of hope of salvation. 
For God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as you do. As you do. Listen, Jesus Christ has told us and showed us in his word what to look for. And these things are happening. And the thing about it is, something that's really concerning me, and I hate to say this, but it's the truth. I want you to listen to me and start paying a little bit of attention about what's going on. All you see now they're really pushing is technology. Everything you see is about technology. They got it out where you can watch TV at home. You can watch it on your cell phone. You can watch it wherever. You can just carry it with you wherever you go. All this stuff's going on. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but it's a distraction to a lot of people. It's a distraction. And you know what it is? The enemy's distracting people by those things, see? That's what we need to keep our uh, mind up on the Lord and not allow these things to uh, come upon us like that and overtake us. I, I think technology is good if it's used in the right way. But you see, it's got to be used in the right way. Listen right here what uh, 1 Peter 4 and 7 says. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watching unto prayer. We need to know where we stand with the Lord. I want to read you something else right here that the Lord showed me. I want to read it to you. Listen to what it says right here. Let me find it here a minute. All right, let's see. It's uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, 9 through 14. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, that some count slackness, but is long suffering usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. You see, in order to be saved, you've got to be born again. You've got to ask Jesus to save you. Some people, you know, they just think, well, I believe and I'm all right. You got to go back to John 3 and 3. He told Nicodemus, he said, Except a man be born again, he can no wise enter into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven. He said, You got to first believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe he died on the cross and rose on the third day. See, and then but when, once that, you go to being drawn by the Spirit, you got to ask Jesus to save you. He said, He stands at the door and knocks. If any man will open that door, he'll come in. He loves you. He loves you after the day. If you listen to me and you say, well, I just don't know about all that, trust me, Jesus loves you and he's real. He wants you to know that he's real and he loves you out there. Listen, he died for you. People say, well, you know, I just don't know. I've done this, I've done that. Listen, he knows what you've done. You ain't caught him off guard. Listen, I, there's somebody here a while back made the statement, the church probably going to fall in because I came in. You know what? They sit there through the whole service and guess what? Ceiling didn't fall in. See? Why? Because Jesus loves them. And this is his heart's desire that they'll turn to him. See, it don't make no difference what you've done. I've talked to people, I've, said, I've, I've witnessed the people that's been on drugs for years and years. And they've been through all kinds of stuff, going to all kinds of stuff, trying to get off of it. But you know what really got them off of it? What got them off of it is when they turned their life over to Jesus Christ. There's people sitting on death row right now in prison. I've heard them interview them on TV. It's a rare thing you'll ever see it. They've interviewed them, and you know what them people done? They asked the Lord to forgive them and save their soul. And you know what? They're sitting there, and they said, you know what? What I did was wrong, and I feel so bad about what I done. But Jesus forgave me. And, and they said, I, look, I may, I may go uh, by however they do it, lethal injection, how they do it. But they said, I love my Jesus. And I've made things right with him. And you know what? They'll go to heaven. You say, well, I don't know about that, about them uh, killing people doing this and doing that. Paul, look what Paul done. He was standing there with them holding the jacket of Stephen when they killed him. It's on him to death. Look what Paul done. Wrote 13 books of the Bible. Next week, God bless you. We love every one of you.